Hey everyone, my name's Brandon and I have autism. I'm also a registered nurse. I have about 11 years experience, most of that being in the intensive care units. Currently, I've been working from home because of COVID and I've been doing remote education, teaching people who have diabetes, that have a nuanced set of diabetes, how to manage their blood sugar, how to eat, that sort of thing. And so that's been really helping a whole lot with me being on the spectrum. I've really enjoyed this change. It's been a unique challenge, but I do like the fact that uh, I have a lot less stimulation than I had before. However, that doesn't mean that I cannot function in a more uh, stressful environment, such as working in the ICU. I did work in the ICU for several years. I adapted, and let's talk a little bit about that today. Before we get started, I do want to say thank you so much for all the support. I've had great comments. I've had a lot of people reaching out to me. And surprisingly, I'm finding out there's a lot of nurses out there that either have been diagnosed as being on the autism spectrum or they suspect that they probably have autism. And some have even asked me if there's a support group. I'm not aware of any support groups at this time specifically for registered nurses or healthcare providers or anyone like that that is also on the spectrum. If any of y'all know of anything like that, mention it down below in the comments section. It'd be very interesting. That's something I'm probably going to look into. Maybe later on in the future, this YouTube channel will morph into something of a support group. So that would be quite nice. Uh, today I want to talk a little bit about anxiety and how that affects me and kind of how I cope. What triggered me to want to talk about this is uh, at being on the spectrum, we have a hard time adapting to rapid changes. It's very upsetting and it's that way for anybody, even a neurotypical person. Having a change in your habits, your schedule, expectations, your job description, it can be pretty difficult to make a quick sudden change. Now there are people that thrive on that sort of thing. I'm not one of those. <laughs> what happened was I've been working at home now for a few months because of the COVID pandemic. So the job that I do for diabetes education, a lot of that can be done remotely and there's some, some other aspects of my role that I'm able to do via electronic means in the computer system. So I don't have only interaction with patients, I do a lot of behind the scenes type work, uh, you know, like uh, managing people's blood glucose by making recommendations to physicians on recommended regimens, that sort of thing. Now, all of a sudden, we found out, hey, we've got to go back to the hospital and do volunteer work. Now, I hadn't been at the bedside taking care of a patient being like a primary care nurse in about five years. So, you know, like they say, if you don't use it, you lose it. And I was quite anxious about going back. Now, it was a necessary thing because there's a huge shortage of nurses and doctors. And I actually wanted to do it. I was just extremely nervous and anxious. I was like, you know, what if I make a mistake? And, you know, what if things have changed? What if there's people that don't know me because I haven't been in those departments in so long? There was a lot of anxiety that I had, and I was doing as much as I could to kind of quell that, but, you know, the anxiety was still there. And I did go and do some volunteer shifts, and then I found out, hey, we got to change again. Now we need nurses to go help at this pop-up clinic and give COVID vaccines. So the county uh, commissioned us basically through my hospital to make sure that the county gets vaccinated. And this was my first time working with the community at such a large scale. Up to this point, I pretty much only worked with patients that were really sick, came in the hospital. So it was more one-on-one, -on -one, but now all of a sudden to have this responsibility where you're gonna be taking care of hundreds of people in this clinic, just going in and out, and you've got less than 10 minutes to take care of each one. That was pretty, um, stressful. So going into it, I really didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what the office was going to look like. I didn't know what the charting was going to be like. I didn't know how much time I had with each person. So there was a whole lot of unknowns that I was quite afraid of. What helped me with that was talking to other people that had already gone into the clinic before and learning a little bit about the layouts and what the demographics were like, you know, like 
but was it a busy clinic? I found out that we had three different locations and so certain ones were more busy than others and certain ones had a certain workflow going on that was better than others and that kind of helped lessen my anxiety a little bit because then I was learning more about what I was getting into. Another thing that I was anxiety had anxiety about was giving the shots because I haven't given an intramuscular shot in so long. I was worried about what if I forget, what if I hurt the patient. I would want to give a good shot and make sure that I charted it correctly, all that sort of thing. So I had a lot of anxiety about that. What I did was I talked to my friends about it. We did some mock-ups and practice drawing up and practice injecting and then we watched a lot of videos. So I know I went on YouTube, I watched a ton of videos from different people about their injection techniques and I saw some on dummies, I saw some on live people. Then when I went into the clinic for my first day yesterday, I had no idea really what I was getting into because I hadn't been in the building yet, I hadn't had an orientation. We got a real quick one hour orientation and I was a nervous wreck. But I compartmentalize pretty well. I've learned to do that because I know, you know, anxiety is infectious. And so if the patient sees that you're anxious, then they're going to get anxious and they're going to think this person doesn't know what they're doing. So I just had to compartmentalize and I pushed through it and I did it. We had a great time. Patients were super thrilled and happy to get their shot. People were so thankful. They said that Everybody was just so nice there in the clinic. So it was a really good experience. But by the end of the day, it was just like, I was so overstimulated that I was hurting. I had a headache. I was having um, stomach issues. So I just went home. I had a nice warm meal and ate something that I liked. And I had a one nice cold adult beverage with that. And that really helped me relax. And then I played some video games and I've noticed it for myself. And I've heard that from a lot of other people who are on the spectrum that playing video games can be a great way to divert their attention and get their mind off of certain stressors. So I played my video game and that really helped. Next day I still had a headache, still kind of achy, and it was definitely tension related because then I went in, got a facial, and went in and had lunch, and I was good. So tonight I'm feeling better. I'm going back to the clinic tomorrow to do some more work and I feel a lot better about it. So the thing is, those of us that have high functioning autism, it's amazing what we can accomplish if we have the right support and if we give ourselves time to have self-care, to eat well, to sleep, to allow yourself to just basically turn the world off and relax a little bit. Those things are really important because if you don't take care of those things, they do have a snowball effect eventually you're going to get to the point where you're just completely paralyzed and you can't do anything. So that's my story in a nutshell, a little bit about just recently what inspired me to want to talk about this. Uh, but I do want to say, looking back at all my years of experience, it's really amazing what I've been able to do. 11 years ago, I started out working as a baby nurse working in the neuro ICU. And I remember the first patient I had, I was scared to death. Uh, I walked in and I'd never seen all those lines and drains. <laughs> this was a very specialized unit, so I had not been exposed to a lot of the equipment that was in there and I was just really worried. But I managed to contain it and compartmentalize it and the nurse that was training me, she said, you sure are calm. And I was thinking to myself, if only she saw what I looked like on the inside. I was just a nervous wreck, you know, my, my stomach was so upset getting a headache, that sort of thing. But it's really important too to know your limitations and know when to say no. And that is something that I'm still working on. I'm getting better at it, but you know, there's always room for improvement. So uh, I would just say, if you're ever in a situation like that where you're going to be introduced into a new environment try to do as much research as you can if you can go ahead of time maybe meet people from there get to know them um, talk about their experiences i think for me that really helps a whole lot just taking as much knowledge as i can before i have to do that new task that new routine it doesn't completely get rid of the anxiety but it does help a whole lot because then there's not as much unknowns that i'm going to have to face so hopefully that's helpful to you guys uh, let me know what else you'd like to talk about, any other things that you have questions about, 
And thank you so much for your support. Make sure to like, subscribe, and like I said, send me any comments down below. I do respond to them all. Thank you so much and have a good day. Please stay safe. Take care.